Radiant Team Pick. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Western Digital Dota 2 Pro Series. It's a presentation of Arrow Gaming versus Scythe in this best of three series here in the semifinals of series number two. Both teams uh, competing to move on to finals have a shot at that $500 prize pool that is presented with each individual series. Um, yeah, awesome matchup. I can't wait to see what these two teams bring to the table here. Um, it's been a, a little while since I cast either of them, but uh, obviously we've seen a lot from them recently. If you've been spectating any Southeastern Asian Dota, these are some big names to watch. I mean, Scythe did get knocked out of the inaugural by Titan, but they still put up quite a fight there as well as in many of their other locations and endeavors. But Arrow Gaming, they have been pretty much the most improved team over the past two or three months. They had a little bit of struggle when their roster switched switched up a little bit um, bad slow game got replaced by Johnny in the both the drafting seat as well as a player role and then uh, they switched over to DDZ's drafting and uh, that's been working out pretty well so far but obviously we'll have to see if it's good enough to take on uh, the amazing presence that Scythe brings to every one of their games now looking into the draft thanks for tuning in once again to Dota Talk TV 2 I am Blaze and I'm gonna be bringing you guys this game solo here um, I, uh, full disclosure is that I am a little bit tuckered out. I like, fell asleep at 10 p.m., woke up at 3 a.m. and was an insomniac from that point forward. So I only got about uh, five hours of sleep, cut that kind of midway through. So eh, still, it's a good time for me, 9 o'clock uh, in the morning in America. So should still be a pretty active game, and I should be able to keep up with it. But forgive me if I do miss out on any little small detail and uh, I'll do my best in the meantime. So looking at the draft itself, we're already seeing some fun action here. Arrow Gaming, DDZ, he's, he knows how good the Ember Spirit can be and he's afraid of it. So since they didn't have first pick, he banned out the Ember Spirit along with the Batrider. This opens up Scythe to pick up the Naga Siren, which is Miracles, one of his like major heroes as far as Rat Dota goes. It is very much in, within his playstyle. Um, but because Arrow, or sorry, Scythe rather decided to ban out the Nature's Prophet and the Doom, they do hand away a Dire Lycan. And a Dire Lycan, of course, being so much more relevant than a Radiant one in the sense that he has even more control over Roche. It's going to give a lot of momentum to Arrow. An Invoker will, might get some early experience from Ro the Roche kill, they'll get the Aegis, and they'll be able to push off of that. The intention of Arrow is probably to have a good foothold on this game right before Naga Siren picks up that Radiance, but we'll have to see exactly what timing we're looking at. Um, in the meantime, the secondary pick, surprising second pick from Scythe, is going to be the Enchantress here. Now, she does add to the push and the gank and the early momentum that we are remaining. usually seeing lacking uh, on a Naga Siren team. But uh, other than that, I don't know if she brings all that much to the table. She can enchant Lycan's Wolves, and that's pretty cool. Or at least one of them, obviously. Um, but uh, beyond that, she's just yeah a heal bot that's going to be able to push down the towers pretty effectively. Um, might go right-click oriented to build mid to late game, but... Otherwise, just going to control that jungle and move about. Anyways, the bands come on through, and despite Scythe already having picked up the Enchantress, Arrow Gaming is still going to ban out the Enigma. I don't know if they're afraid of a solo Enigma going in the offlane and then coming in with the Song of the Siren plus Black Hole combo. It seems like they are a little bit worried about this Wombo. They think Song of the Siren isn't just going to be a, a tool for ratting. It's going to be a tool for team fights. So they're afraid Song of the Siren into Black Hole, Song of the Siren into Ice Blast, and through that theory crafting, have taken it upon themselves to ban those two heroes out. Now they get the first pick into phase two, so they can really bolster their roster here with whatever hero they f find fitting, but the Nyx Assassin and the Clockwork won't be amongst them. Those are two heroes that have been taken off the board, um, presumably just because, look at Scythe bans. They're just banning out offlaners, left and right. They're like, okay, Xiang Zai, he only has a limited hero pool, he hasn't been offlaning for that long, so he might lack a bit of experience, and we can kind of try to force them out of their comfort zone. So banning out Furion, banning out Doom, Clockwork, and Nyx, all of these great offlane heroes taken off the board, and if Scythe just picks one up for themselves right here, they're going to be feeling very confident as far as that offlane setting. They're going to pick up the Centaur Warrunner, pretty much the best offlaner left in the pool since Bat has also been taken out on the side of Arrow. And yeah, I've, I really do feel that if Scythe have won anything in this draft, it's the, the prominence of this offlaner. He's going to be much more potent than whatever Arrow can bring in. And uh, I don't think they're going to opt to aggressive try just based on that, but they are going to have to play it very safe. 
So Sand King is going to be the follow-up pick from Arrow Gaming that was their first pick in Phase 2. This means that they're going to have a lot more teamfight than they did bring to the table before, and along with that, um, they will be able to get more out of passive play. By stacking up the jungle, Sand King can farm up an early blink dagger, and that can be a really strong tool for counter-initiating, as well as just getting good long-range lockdown. But as I say that, the stacking for Sand King might not be as prominent, as the other support pickup is going to be the Chen. Now, I know that the current support pair, which is Mosin and Johnny, love to pick up the micro-intensive Chen, as well as gank-oriented heroes like uh, with a stun. So, Alchemist, Sand King, things like that. The issue that I have with that is now you're running a Sand King and a Lycan in a dual lane on the safe lane here, and that is going to be a little bit vulnerable for Centaur. Uh, He's going to be able to go in and he, of course, probably won't be killing off a Sand King or a Lycan, but he's going to be getting free experience. Sand King just doesn't have that much zoning potential, and unless Chen commits to the lane pretty hard, Centaur's going to be uh, just having the time of his life on that offlane. That being said, um, once Chen picks up maybe level 5, maybe a Basilius, anything he feels is necessary to rotate in to take that top tier 1, the Lycan Wolves, the Howl, all gonna expedite that process, and Centaur doesn't bring that much as far as counter push without injuring himself dramatically. Dire team ban. Nevertheless, uh, we're going to conclude phase two of the giraffe with Slice picking up an alchemist here. Now, I believe that is going to be a support alchemist. They've got their offlaner, they've got their Naga Siren that they can run in the mid or as a carry, and then of course Enchantress is going to be jungling as a support, but Alchemist, is the two roles that he's really seen nowadays is in the solo mid, you're maxing out Acid Spray and trying to be uh, a pain in the rear there, but it's not that great against Invoker, who can just auto-attack from range and regen with Quas. And then uh, the other alternative, of course, is Support, where he does dish out a lot of Disable and a good amount of physical damage. So, presumably, Scyther's still looking for a carry pickup or a mid pickup that can go up against the Invoker, and there are quite a few heroes to speak of in that role. So, final ban's gonna come on through, and you have to be looking at Arrow's side of things. They're even tapping into bonus time, because they just don't know what to ban. What is their last pickup? Scythe have so many different ways that they could go about this. They're afraid of the Weaver, and they will take that out, and I think that's pretty good. Because, I mean, you don't have the Hex, you don't have the hard silence, and Voker's probably not gonna be rushing an Orchid or anything like that. So, the Weaver wouldn't have any counter. And same thing with the Slurk, of course, being a nearly uncounterable hero. Just kidding. But... Um, yeah, the last pick for Scythe is a little bit convoluted. For Arrow, it's it's more straightforward. They're just looking for something that can stabilize on that offlane. Hell, I'd almost say a Lich is viable as a consideration for that offlane at this stage, because there's just so many heroes that have been taken out. Um, anything that, any hero that can move quick on their feet, maybe go boots first and survive, would be perfectly fine. The offlaner is a lot easier than it used to be, pre-6.79, but... We're going to be tapping into the last 15 seconds of Arrow's bonus time to see Reserve what they come up with. This is going to be Xiang Zai's hero. This is going to be on the offlane. Unless they decide to, you know, run a Quaswex, sit uh, AFK Invis Invoker. But no, they're going to go with the Darkseer, and I do think that works well for their team. Uh, the Iron Chill push isn't that considerable, but it's something. And then when it comes down to the team fights, the Exhort Invoker, which DDZ loves to run, plus a Sand King, are going to be very well set up by that uh, vacuum. On top of that, taking some illusions for yourself via Dark Seer's Wall of Replica well, will always be fine and dandy there. And it does just offer you a little bit of control. Now, as far as item builds up, I'm not sure where the, what the Dark Seer is going to start off with, because obviously the Chen is going to be moving in towards that mechanism earlier, and even the Vlads is going to be picked up by the Lycan. So Dark Seer doesn't have great options. He doesn't want to, like, rush a pipe until the Radiance is a threat. So I'm not exactly sure where he's going to go. Maybe just, like, a, a casual Vanguard or something, just to tank up a bit in those early skirmishes. Maybe a Blink Dagger to set up Sand King faster. I don't know, but... Yeah, he is going to get a lot of gold just be via Iron Shell for the most part, and we're going to have to see what he turns that into. Alright, so now we've got 
Early momentum for Arrow Gaming. They've got Lycan and Chen to take down towers. They've got Sand King to set up fights as soon as he finds 2150 gold. The only one that's really experienced Reliant is going to be DDZ's Invoker, but he's going to be getting a Midas very early on because of that top tier 1 tower kill. So, assuming Darkseer does okay on the offlane, assuming uh, Scythe doesn't switch things up entirely and go somehow like aggressive in the enemy jungle where Enchantress could contest Chen directly for possession of his creeps, um, then things will work out for Arrow and they'll get gold, they'll get experience, and we'll just have to see how much structural damage they can do before the Naga Siren pulls out that Radiance. But Scythe, they've been debating, they've been uh, conversing, and they pull out a Queen of Pain. Now this is a very interesting pickup to be honest. It is going to be the mid versus the Invoker, I believe, and that leaves Mikasa aka Miracle to be running on the Naga in the safe lane. So this is going to get pretty interesting guys. A, f a lot of classic pickups here. Uh, the way that they've uh, both these teams have been running their lineups in general it shows here, like that Johnny, he loves to play his Chen, he's done a lot of great uh, aggressive action with the Chen. DDZ, the drafter, has picked up his signature invoker. Starts off with Quaz, I guess he's worried about that Shadow Strike harassment pre-level 3. But the interesting thing is how these heroes are going to be poised to fight. Like Polisan, currently making his move towards the bottom lane, are they really going to try to make like a dual lane out of mid? I, I don't know. Right now, Miracle is making his way there, and it looks like he does want to go for that bottle rush on the mid. So that's going to be a safe lane farming Queen of Pain, mid Naga Siren, and then of course uh, the Dark Seer will be running on the off lane for a short time frame before rotating into his jungle once Johnny isn't so desperately reliant on getting early levels. Anyway, so uh, that's enough for my breakdown of the lanes a little bit. Let's go on into the specifics. Looking at players, looking at the heroes they are playing with our formal introduction. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to Dota Talk TV 2 for the WD Pro series. This is the first game of the best of three series and starting off the horn sounding as we get underway. Looking over in the corner of the Radiant, we are going to be looking at Miracle begins. running on the Naga Siren in the mid lane. Support Alchemist is going to be played by Chibi X on the bottom. It is going to be Enchantress to take up the Radiant Jungle, played by Freedom. That does leave Hana to take up the offlane Centaur, and Polisson to play the safe lane farming Queen of Pain. Looking over at Arrow, we're going to be seeing Johnny playing up on the Chen. Pretty cool cosmetic set there. We are going to be seeing a safe lane Lycan, played by Lance, farming up a storm. On the offlane, we're already seeing Iron Shell come out for Xiang Zai running on the Darkseer on that offlane roll set. And uh, even two, as a matter of fact, as he does get harassed a little bit by the Shadow Strike and a few auto attacks. Actually, looking at it, charging the stun, Darkseer has five armor. Oh, Chili stuns himself! Xiang Zai! They had to have had vision. That's just a complete misplay. Chibi is taking tons of damage from Iron Shell, and Xiang Zai is going on the offensive. Maybe like a, a double mind game bait, as now they throw out the actual stun. Now they get the right click, and they will get the first blood. But my goodness, was that a risk uh, to take? That was actually quite surprising. I did not not expect uh, the next level mind games of Chibi stunning himself to make Darkseer feel like he had a chance and give even more opportunities for them to bring him down. Wow, that was interesting. Anyways, uh, to conclude the introduction, that Mosin Sand King is supporting the Lycan on the top. Not going to be very present in this lane. Like, how do you zone out a Centaur as a Sand King as the only support? I don't know. Actually, a Hoofstomp even going to come out. If this was a double edge, Lycan would be dropping down to very low HP. But going for the return, just in case the Sand King does start auto-attacking him a little bit or the Chen Creeps come into play. And uh, the last one, uh, looking over at DDZ, on the mid lane, he has started off with that Null Talisman, but now did rotate into Exhort at level 3. So it isn't uh, a Quaz into Wex, it's a Quaz into Exhort. Centaur picked up for uh, Johnny. He's going to be making his move on the mid lane. We'll see if he can actually make an impact with it. Uh, of course, the War Stomp is a full 2 seconds, and they do add in more damage instances to proc Cold Snap, but... It's just, it's still a very difficult one. We're going to see actually simultaneous movement here. Attempted courier snipe coming in from Chibi, and he just might get it. We'll have to see. 
We'll actually see some similar movement from the Chen, but let's look at Alchemist first. Chen B1 right click, looking for the second one. There is no upgrade, but he's not fast enough. He can't get the last auto attack off. In the meantime, Johnny breaking out his own smoke, and look at the zoo that has shown up to the party. Enchantress duh, meets your centaur with a centaur plus troll, and is going to be able to force Johnny away. So Johnny wasting some time here, sitting at level 2. Enchantress closing in on level 3, and much closer to home. But the end result is that neither courier will be picked off, despite some aggressive movements with the Invis Rune, as well as the Smoke of Deceit. Looking at the CS count, we currently see Queen of Pain on top of the charts, no surprise there, but I'm actually kind of surprised how little Lance is getting out of this lane. Like, I guess it's just Hannah's off-laning Centaur and the fact that Mosin can't do anything to him. This is a level 2, about to be 3 Sand King, and he just, he can't pressure Hana the way a normal support could, the way a ranged support could. And it's quite unfortunate. In fact, now Lance taking even more hits. This is just going to make him play even more passively, and he's going to fall behind on CS. This is very, very awkward indeed. Sand King, scaling up level 2 Sandstorm. Cue the Darude, because he is going to be able to farm up this stacked easy camp. But in the meantime, we're going to actually, where did Chen wind up? He actually went all the way back to base for his boots of speed. A little awkward there, but... It does happen. Now we see, after clearing out this camp, that they are going to take the Centaur and the Hellbear Smasher and make their move on the mid lane. Mikasa does not have Ensnare or even mana to cast anything, but we're talking two very hard-hitting creeps and a Alchemist stun to start things off. So if the Concoction uh, rings true, and the fact that Invoker does not have Wex, this should be a guaranteed kill. But it all comes down to positioning, the Rune Spawn up top. Uh, will anybody be baited in? And will Johnny, he scouts out the smoke, but can he get away in time? Chibi popping the stun, but there's Fog of War. Centaur stop, Centaur path, body block. Chibi won't get any vision in time, and now he's going to fall. DDZ coming in, getting stomped up by the Centaur, but still delivering massive right clicks to the low armor Enchantress. Forward Spirit melting that away to negative one, and uh, she has to pop her nature's attendance just to walk away. A great counter gank in a 2v2. Chen claims the rune, and as a whole, they get a really good control of this mid lane. Now, the Radiant did get an Observer Ward up here. They were trying to get vision onto the Chen. But I actually think it was the Cold Snap that prevented the Unstable Concoction from being thrown. I don't even think he was limited by the... Um, of the site because he had Invoker right down there in the same region but unfortunately it was just him turning around too slow so many things hitting him at once that cold snap uh, made it so that he couldn't get it off and he didn't actually die to the uh, stun uh, actually the stun didn't even go off because it was still charging but the fact is he didn't put out any offensive pressure and he was just a, a lamb for the slaughter Still, hashtag space created, we do see that top in the charts continuously. It is going to be Miracle and Polisson farming so hard. But what does Polisson go for the starting item? Obviously, uh, Miracle is going to go for his drum into Radiance buildup. And that's uh, been a pretty tried and true one for him. He just wants some good stats. He wants some good sustainability with intelligence. So he can use the spells and get some mobility as well. And that's going to work out fine. But Polisson, on the other hand has a very interesting decision before him. It looks like it's going to be... Uh, oh, actually, damage coming down bottom. Can Xiang Zai fall? Two in Surge is not going to be enough as Polisson just pops off the ultimate, delivering huge amounts of magic damage that he just wasn't ready for. So, can't underestimate the damage output of that Queen of Pain with ulti early on. She did get pretty much solo experience on this lane with Alchemist roaming so much. Anyways, it looks like she's going to go for an Orchid, unless that was for Treads. Yeah, that was for Treads. I have no idea what this Queen of Pain is going to go. I'm interested to see Orchid, Aghanims, Scythe. I don't know. There obviously are plenty of items on the table here. But one thing that it, Scythe is kind of lacking right now is the Roche control. They don't have any vision near the Roche pit, at least for the moment. They know that Lycan hasn't been farming as much as he'd like to, but he is still finding his Vlads at an okay time. Doesn't have the Medallion, of course, but... They have to keep an eye on that Roche pet, and that might even mean sending in Enchantress's creeps just to scout it out. Because that that uh, right now things seem okay for Scythe. Actually, mid lane we are seeing some damage, but DDZ he sees the Invis rune. Mosin can't get in range. There is no direct threat there. Century War would have been nice for the kill if Miracle wasn't just so darn good. 
Speaking of uh, next level plays, I'm actually kind of surprised that there is no skill point in the Song of the Siren. I kind of understand it though, the mirror images are farming up a storm here, farming the radiant camps that are either being stacked up or just cleared out uh, minute by minute. And it actually is getting a miracle, that extra level of CS. 50 CS, now we see the Stampede is going to be up top, damage coming in for the kill on Johnny, big double edge, but Centaur's low, and Lance is pursuing, great Burrow Strike to bring down Hana, but can they get one more? We do see the enchant, but big right clicks coming in from Lance, he's got the crits, there's the Sun Strike dodged out, and it's only going to be some Shockwave damage onto Mosin, they still will finish off the Enchantress, but will Mosin fall? One more Shockwave is what they need, it will hit, but... He walks away with 15 HP, nevertheless. Close calls left and right, but the Sand King walks away, and the conclusion of the fight is a 3 for 3. Sand King getting a huge rebound in Golden Experience. Mosin now level 6 with 1,300 gold banked up. Very impressive movement from Arrow. Really getting the kills on important heroes, especially Hannah. That's a level 7 centaur kill. That's going to give you so much experience and a nice hefty sum of cash. But again, Polisson keeps farming away. He's not going to go for a Midas or anything weird like that. He is just sitting on those treads. And I, I definitely rate those three items. Like I said, Orchid, because he's going to get it so early. Or the Scythe, because it's an amazing item that fits an Intelligence Hero very effectively. And the last one I can think of would be a Aghanim Scepter. And that's unorthodox, but... You get the hard nuke, you get the lower cooldown. Now we see flank to gank onto Lance here, gonna hit, take a ton of damage, a huge stun coming out on him, but they know that they can't finish the job. No point in double edging under the tower when you're practically suiciding, but here comes a satyr. If only it was a troll, if they could have locked down Chibi. Body blocks, is it gonna be enough? Invis body blocks from the wolves, but he doesn't get it on point. He gets a decent one off, but if he had just like fully choked off the juncture, that actually might have been a kill. But alas, it is not meant to be. There is the response from the Alchemist. He walks away, and I am getting a bit of lag here. I think everybody is. Yeah, I had this happen yesterday. Uh, I was casting something for the Corsair Asia Cup, and it was a uh, both Thai teams on the Singapore server having a lot of lag issues. You could see it via spectating, and obviously they felt it when they were playing. The pings should be fine, as far as I can tell. We are looking at, yeah, I mean, 170 is a bit high for sure. It's actually quite high for Arrow, but it is definitely a server thing more so than a individual connection thing. Anyways, we've been on the CS tab for quite a long time. We can marvel at Miracle's farming skills all day long, but let's switch over to where it really matters, the net worth chart. What that gold is turning into. Actually, actually put Radiant Vision on for a second there. Sorry about that. But where is that gold going? Right now, 4630 on Polisson. He's banked 2800 of that. Uh, we do see top lane some action, so I'm moving over there. Uh, Stampede is available, but they're really just trying to hold this position and keep this tier 1 active. Man, this lag must be very frustrating for them to play on, because it's a little glitchy just to, just to watch from my perspective. Looking down at the bottom, it's going to actually fall before the top tier one, which is something that I wouldn't have predicted just coming out of the draft, but the good response from Scythe, they're very diligent in keeping that pressure out, and Darkseer's Iron Shell uh, counter push is just not enough. But moments later, the tower falls, and it ends up being an equal trade. Now, the big deal is where Lance goes from here. Is he going to go for Roche with his medallion available, with mana enough for one more wolf summon? Or is he just going to be jungling up as efficiently as possible? Either way, he's going to have the space to do whatever he wishes because Mosin and Johnny are on the move. They've got the Epicenter, the Haste Rune. Oh, Miracle walking right into it. Can he get the song off in time? Will it be enough? He gets Centaur stomped. And even if he popped the song, he's a dead man in the water. Is hit up by the Epicenter. Great combo from Mosin. And uh, they take the Haste Rune to boot. So this gives DDZ a ton of space to push on mid. And he is nearing that 404. In fact, has it. Double Forge Spirits are available, and that means the push is here, has arrived. They are able to do so much damage to this tower as soon as he goes ahead with the summons. And, of course, they do a lot of damage to heroes as well. Some more map control, some better ward vision. And now, Lycan is free to Roche as soon as he feels Dyer's it is appropriate. Is under In the meantime, though, aggressive position for Polson just barely has enough mana for Blink alone. And it is going to be that Aghanim's Rush that I have yet to see in a professional setting. See it all the time in pubs because, you know, lasers 
uh, win the money. But in this case here, we're going to be seeing an Aghanim Scepter around 13 minutes on a Queen of Pain. And although her damage enhancement, I wouldn't say it's so-so. Like, it increases the damage of it. But the biggest deal is that it reduces the cooldown. And that is going to be very spammable. You can use it to farm out creep waves, kill off every one of Chen's creeps and wolves. Um, you can do it, for, you're just the ultimate counter pusher at that point. And of course, using it every single team fight doesn't hurt either. I mean, the Song of the Siren TP uh, cooldown will eventually be 60 seconds, and the Queen of Pain Sonic Wave synergizes pretty well with uh, the 40 second timing. Radiance bottom tower is Aggressive movement attack. from Scythe. We do see them all smoked up here. Moving on to the Radiant side. Oh, DDZ has a point in Wex. Do they have any detection? They do have Sentry Wards on Chibi. So the, this kill should be pretty well certain. That's only if they don't see them coming. Channeling the stun. Concoction's gonna fly. Pulse on has his ultimate. And here it goes. DDZ getting Medallion. Dropping low. And is the test of faith enough? Hand of God is enough. There's no Sonic Wave. And he is going to be able to get out. In the meantime, Mozen Burrow striking in. Getting the kill on Queen of Pain before the Song of the Siren comes out. And they will walk away. Now, I thought I saw a test of faith there. But it might have been a misclick maybe on one of Chen's creeps. Either way... Nobody on the side of Arrow did get picked off, and Queen of Pain never popped her ultimate. Just got stunned up too much, hesitated a little, and that's it. Now a blank stun coming in from Hannah. Huge double edge coming out, but Mosin drops another great burst strike. Hannah's gonna fall. There's a Chen stomp. Mikasa, he wants it. Miracle gets the net, but is it even gonna get the kill? Yes, there's the Riptide. He's in range, and Arrow are on the run. They are just gonna be able to cut their losses and pull out as quickly as possible, while Miracle with this double damage rune. It just batters down on the tier 1 in mid. Enchantress dropping low. The wolves! The wolves chase her down! Super wolves coming in. They're the assassins of the game. And they will snipe in through like a Riki Maro from behind. Ah, oh, that is such, such a nice little snipe. And uh, I think it just is attributed to the only one point in Untouchable. Like those wolves shouldn't be able to kill off an Enchantress. But he didn't. He prioritized the nature's attendance. And is... Able to be auto attacked by these things. A couple of good crits, and that's a that's a nice little kill. Anyways, uh, as the dust settles, we do see that the Queen of Pain still has her ultimate available, and the Agonims is only 200 gold away. Is invisible as well, so Arrow has to be extremely wary at this stage, especially Xiang Zai, who really wants that mechanism. He's just been so delayed. But the big deal here for Arrow is that Mozen has picked up a Blink. His Burrow Strikes have already been pretty well on point, so adding in the Blink maneuverability, they're going to have so much potential. Another sad stun from Chibi. His Chemical Rage is actually going to heal him through the Iron Shell damage, though. But look at Roshan. The Forward Spirits are tanking it up. The Medallion in play. Just coming in for... Like, Lance just walks over and casually Medallions it. Radiant don't have any vision of this. But I guess DDZ Ghost walked in. Might have smoked in as well. Obviously a possibility. But it is just going to be a nice little pickup from DDZ. They say, Lycan's on the field. They couldn't possibly be doing Roche. Wrongo. Alacrity, Forward Spirits, Necronomicon. This thing is dropping and dropping fast. All the experience for DDZ. He is going to just pick up the Aegis and jump up to level 11. Actually, practically to level 12. So that was just really solid. In the meantime, though, I did miss out a kill. There is a double stomp, though. Follow up. The cold snap is there, and they trade it. Polosan will fall for a measly Chen pick. And they're just going to push off of that. No problem at all. He'll respawn in 10 seconds with Hand of God available. And Polisan just dived too deep. He's like, I got the Sonic Wave. I can get this kill. Sure you can, but at what cost, ladies and gentlemen? At what cost? Tier 1 tower dropping low. Chibi has a stun. Is it going to be enough to hold them? Or are we going to see another amazing blink initiation from Hannah? Tower dropping low, but outside of deny range. It looks like Arrow will calm themselves for the moment and uh, wait for the next opening. In the meantime, let's check out that Radiance timing. Naga Siren. Miracle, sitting uh, on his Sacred Relic, plus 500, is only 850 off of the Radiance. When that happens, kiss uh, Vision of the enemy Tier 2's goodbye, because the, the, you're never going to get close. You're always going to be pushed out, unless you're pushing as a full five-man team. Radiance so Split isn't going to work anymore, because Mirror Images split against you. So in this case, they're going to have to really just batter down, force uh, down the mid lane, and take some major fights before this Naga Siren starts getting out of hand. Because not only does it make it harder and harder to push now that the Naga Siren is going to have the Radiance, but of course it amplifies her farming potential, I would say two or three fold. 
Like the Radiance is just so good at this stage in the game. Only 16 and a half minutes. Unfortunately for Arrow, with even with a Lycan lineup, they've only taken two towers. One Roshan, but only two towers. And that is going to be meaning that the only real answer is to kill Miracle. Kill the Naga Siren, bring the fish down, and... Actually, on top lane, damage coming in. Polison again overextending a little bit too much. Too many stuns coming in. Polison blinks. Do actually, oh, he will fall. He disjointed the auto attack with that blink, but he was still in range for that last one. I don't even know how they had vision on him, but indeed they did. And uh, the last tower hit comes through anyways. So blink stun from Mozen, follow up from the centaur. Sunstrike, of course, on the money. And... Uh, he does have five points in it, so they're able to deal some devastating damage from afar. <sighs> this is this is interesting. I mean, Miracle's doing so well, but the farm that Polisan got doesn't seem to have amounted to very much at all. I mean, you look at it. Polisan sat there free farming uh, minute by minute, and I'm like, what is he buying? What is he buying? What is he buying? He turns it into an Aghanim Scepter, which, by the way, he hasn't even used yet, and now... He's been fed, unfortunately, twice over. One for a low-value kill. So now, swooping in, Arrow still has the Sage's Immortal. They want to make use of it, but the Radiance comes out for the Naga. We have the Vacuum up, the mechanism available for the Darkseer, but no wall just yet. Only level 9. Lance took down the tier 1, made quick work of it on the bottom lane, and now is looking for the tier 2, but swooping in from behind, there is a Smoke of Deceit. As well as a very low HP and mana Hellbear, but that's that's besides the point. Damage coming in. I think this will fall, but Hannah blinks in to start things off. A great Sonic Wave to bring him down, but he just pops his ultimate and goes to town onto Chibi. He's gone abruptly, and now they cremate the Enchantress as well. Epicenter comes through, forcing uh, Miracle to pop the ultimate. They did bring down DDZ, but they are still in retreat. Hannah on low life, saved by the song, and that's going to be... The end of that fight for them. I gotta say, that Hand of God plus Shapeshift, the HP just shot up on this Lycanthrope. And he was able to completely turn that around. Now they take the Tier 2, they look for the Tier 3. Is the Radiance going to be enough to delay this push? All 5 alive for Scythe, but the Sonic Wave just now off cooldown. So Polisan doesn't even throw out the Wave just yet. Throws out the Scream. Just a little bit of magic damage is all they needed. Now they steal the Seder, and they force arrow back. So, once Epicenter's off cooldown, Bozen will be feeling pretty good about a team fight again, but since the last one didn't accomplish too much due to Song, they are just gonna rest on their laurels for the moment. We do see Necro 3 coming out for Lance on top of the Necro 3 that's already up for DDZ. Really just showing that they want to end this game fast. They do have the Midas, so they can kind of take this to the mid to late game with this Invoker, but they don't want to risk it. Every minute passes, Naga Siren has a much higher chance of taking this game away. They won't give him the opportunity, they'll turn up the gas, and they will try to bring him down as quickly as possible. Smoke movement, Hannah has the blink. Will they be able to catch out Lance, though? He has that shapeshift up and at him. Hannah's in range. Will Blink stomp? Oh, they're going to start with the Ensnare. He is locked in place just for a moment, but he already got the shapeshift off, Then the co unstable concoction is not enough to give them the confidence to take it away. I feel if he was actually stunned out for, like, say, two and a half seconds, that's enough for Enchantress to get off an Impetus or two. And Impetus does a lot of damage to Lycanthrope when he's running for the hills at 522 MS. But that being said, they have been counter-initiated on multiple times this game. It's understandable that they are so antsy about trying to commit fully to a fight. I mean, last time they jumped, they committed huge disables and huge nukes to Lycanthrope right under their tier 2. And then he just gets half his health back and tears them apart anyways. So they do have to feel they have to feel a little bit more reserved. They say we have to distribute our damage a little more efficiently in order to make things work for us. But Lance just keeps on his farming away, has that Vladimir's, and is going to be bringing himself back up to about 75% HP. We do see about 8,000 gold in favor of Arrow as well, the experience. Oh, mid lane, Chibi dropping down. They already cold snapped him earlier and had the Necro, well, Necro on cooldown. They just used the Forge Spirit to right click him down. But Mosin comes in, helps DDZ secure the kill, and now the action's on top. They do see Hannah blinking in to stun out Lance just to make sure that Polson's safe and sound, and he does have his blink off cooldown and will 
head back to the fountain to heal up. Damn. One uh, item pickup that they could go in use in conjunction with the Necro 3s is that I don't know if they maybe have thought of is Blade Mails. The amount of damage that you can turn around with Double Edge, the amount of damage that you can reflect with a Sonic Wave, if two or three people pop a Blade Mail, so Queen of Pain kills herself using her ultimate. You could say almost say the same about Radiance over the course of uh, that four or five second period. Uh, Naga takes a ton of damage from her own Radiance, and that actually would be really cool to see. But whether or not they look into Blade Mails, right now they have the momentum, they have the pressure, they'll pop the shape shift, getting the heals, is it enough? The Sonic Wave will not do it! He's gonna get Test of Faith home! Now coming in, dropping the epicenter, Mosin will get it onto two heroes, no the song locks him in! No soup for you, back of the line, Sand King, hold, held in place, all their ultis now on cooldown. Oh, that would have been such a good epicenter if not for Miracle's incredible song. But he still drops low. I think his Radiance killed off a Necro melee creep. The uh, warrior has that last will. But either way, a uh, really good song of the Siren. Made sure that they kept at least two of those three heroes up. Not sure if they would have caught them all, but not worth it to risk it. So, gotta say, great defensive posture from both sides. Lance being Test of Faith home, having all of his cooldowns back up in 50 seconds, and uh, of course... The Song of uh, Naga Siren actually helping out the rest of your team. But now Roche will be respawning. A very short respawn time, guys. That is not even, what, 15 second respawn post the 8 minute mark? Lag again. So that quick respawn time definitely favors Arrow, but only if they take advantage of it. Yeah, both sides are definitely taking lag at the moment. Not, not a tactical pause by any means. Though, if you want to f spam your Franker Z in Twitch, I don't mind one bit. Lance gonna be get gone on. Hannah's already in range. There's the blink stun. Double edge coming through, and yeah, he is roasted, toasted, and sent a packing. Now we do see Illusion being picked off real quick, but this actually puts Arrow in an awkward spot. They just lost their Lycanthrope. They certainly can't fight, and they are gonna have to head for the hills as rapidly as they can. So this actually buys a huge amount of space for Arrow, or sorry, for Scythe. Arrow now are less likely to try to attempt the Roshan at its early spawn. They're definitely not going to be pushing in towards the base. And look at Naga Siren's next pickup. That Manta style is only 400 gold away. I even think he's going to buy out for it. Buyback isn't valuable enough when you're under this much pressure. As long as he can keep those illusions as tanky as possible, keep spamming them out, he can make a very large impact. And uh, I believe that, yeah, he's just going to try to get that as quickly as possible with that Radiance Illusion farm. Not late game Naga Siren, guys. This is just such a frustrating thing to deal with. And Arrow, they tried to draft in a way that they wouldn't have to deal with it. They got the Lycan, they got all the Necros, but it just isn't enough just yet. Now things have spread out a little bit. We do see two in the mid lanes of Mosin wants to go. He's got the Blink Force and Iron Shell to do so. But it's mostly just for Illusion Clear right now, as we do see they can't commit with these two guys up top. Hand of God still rank 1. Chen's long-range utility is quite limited. Still, I think Larish has been scouted. If not, it will be in this very second. Lance sees it, and Lance wants to take advantage. He's going to go in. Wolves are out. Wolves out, boys. We got the medallion up, and they are going to be taking this at extremely fast pace. I don't think Scythe are going to be able to respond to it. Yes, they have the song, but... Miracle's all the way back home, no BOTs. So Enchantress scouts it out, does make them think twice about it, but Lance is still here, and he's still right-clicking away. Miracle's just going to say, screw it, you guys can take your Roche, you can have your Aegis. It's not a cheese, it's not that much experience at 25 minutes compared to when they got it the first time around. So he is okay to just farm away. He gets his Manta. He gets his next big thing, and yeah, if, okay, actually, we're going to see initiation. Mosin stunning out Hannah. He stampedes away the cold uh, snap. It's not enough. He will be able to escape, but Lance does pick up the, well, not the Aegis. The Aegis is denied! Oh, Enchantress didn't even catch that. Enchantress had a creep inside the pit, and Freedom is able to deny the Aegis of the Immortal. So only getting golden experience for that last hit, and now with the Necros expended, it's going to be hard to break this high ground. This is very awkward for Arrow. They want, want, want to push in because they know how aggressive Miracle is being. He's like farming up, he's killing off all these creeps, but can they break the high ground? Sonic Wave comes out, 
clears out a ton of creeps, but the tier 3 still taking a ton of hits. Mjolnir onto Lance. They're going to focus him down anyways, but uh, the Sunstrike won't ring true, and Lance has to dance about a little bit here. Is going to take down the tier 3. Incoming, though, the Alchemist. He actually canceled. Where is he at? He, yeah, he stunned himself. Ah, oh, Chibi, what the hell. Now we see the Blink stun coming in onto DDZ, taking him down to half HP. The impetus damage is there, but she's only level 9. Oh, look at that damage! Enchantress gets trucked on the front lines there. Invoker gets the last hit. That was incredible. The test of faith and max output. I think there was a last will in there. I don't know. Like, that was just absolutely absurd how quickly she just vanished before our eyes. Another canceled TP. This one may be intentional. They really need to force the issue here. Miracle is getting farmed. They're giving him too much space. He's taking the dire jungle and getting a ton of net worth. About to pass DDZ. And they do need to force the issue. But Enchantress is back up. Sonic Wave. Such a good pickup here to just keep the waves clear. The wolves take full damage from those magical spells. Hannah getting cold snap though. Underneath five hits. Is it going to be enough to bring him down? A Sun Strike is required, and I don't think he's going to get it. DTZ getting stunned alongside Xiang's Eye. Mech, Hand of God, they're back up and fighting. They have the Wall of Replica. They have Alacrity on the Lycan. Wolves out, and we're going to see this Rax drop readily. Can Scythe hold it? Miracle's not even here yet. He has the TV scroll, but they're patient. They forced them out once again, and uh, Dyer don't have vision on him. The arrow just are forced into retreat. The racks will regenerate all the damage dealt. Wow, this is... The hesitance from Arrow is actually a little bit disconcerting because they do need to force it. Like, they are plateauing hard, guys. They had such an advantage uh, to this point in the game, but 28 minutes in, they haven't gotten anything that they didn't already have 23 minutes in. Uh, capped, peaked out at 13,000 gold as well as about 10k experience. The miracle, the rat is farming up a storm. I mean, you look at how far these waves are pushed out towards these towers. It's all because of the Naga Siren. Just putting out that continuous pressure with the mirror images. And now he's setting them behind enemy lines. He says, oh, courier? No, no, he's that, not that. Uh, Well-timed, I guess is the best word. Lance popping everything. He's got Mjolnir, he's got Alacrity, he's going in. And we'll see if it works out. He has the BKB going on Chibi. Is he going to get stampeded away? Yes, here's the Sonic Wave. The Scream onto multiple, but Mosin, he gets the Epicenter. Four staffs onto Polison. Still only getting about half the damage out. And Lance is dropping fast. Pops the BKB and is on the run. Uh, now going on to Miracle. Can he get the song off this Cold Snap? If for running it for a while, but now he gets it. And Lance's BKB has expired. Polison in a great position. Chibi with the stun going on to DDZ. Focusing him down with the impetus after impetus, and they will get the kill. DDC is gone. Johnny already taken out of the picture, and Polison, even in pursuit of two. One TP is away. Xiang Zai juking, but is he juking hard enough? Yes, the Blink Dagger comes out. Polison still on his tail. Three seconds on Blink, but he gets fogged. He gets mind game, and Xiang Zai is out of here. So, one, Harrow does make a very clean retreat after that song, but... Scythe hold it. The melee racks drops down to about 200 HP, but is gaining 5 a second, and it will be tip-top shape in no time if Arrow doesn't make something happen soon. That song of the Siren from Miracle was so clutch. Uh, DDZ turns around, pops the Cold Snap on him, but the current duration of Cold Snap is only 4.5 seconds. Max Quaz? Sure, that's a kill. But Miracle got the ability to use it, and use it he did. Lance, without the shapeshift, couldn't finish him off. And Scythe turned that around very, very efficiently. Now, <laughs> Mikasa, or I keep on calling him that. He obviously loves Attack on Titan. But Miracle um, crosses paths with Mosin and just says, Nope, I'll farm your jungle over here. Have a good day, sir. Ah, oh, this is getting out of control for Titan. Or ah, Wow, I'm just throwing out words left and right. Like I said, guys, I didn't get enough sleep. But uh, no matter how many variants of teams are participating in this game somehow... We are going to be seeing Arrow losing their lead. It's been a bit of a, a flux here, up and down, but it is very consistently moving south for Arrow. Hiding in the tree line, Polison has a BKB now farmed up. Let's just check out the item count as a whole. I know I haven't been clicking everybody left and right, so we've got Vanguard on the Alchemist. We've got absolutely nothing on Freedom. We've got the Mechanism on... Hana moving in towards, I think, a BKB. Could be a Halberd, theoretically. But probably just a BKB because of that Sand King damage. 
Uh, beyond that, on the side of the dire, I think I've covered it pretty much. DDZ's uh, Mjolnir, I haven't mentioned directly, but you've seen it plenty of times over. This thing has been doing some work with that, those lightning procs. But the interesting pickup, and I think the most noteworthy right now, is Johnny working towards his Aghanim Scepter. And usually you're like, okay, why would you want in a, a, your hand of God on a 30 second cooldown? The fights don't last that long. But in this game, they absolutely are. And it's because of the Queen of Pain. Sonic Wave on a 40 second cooldown, they love to space out the fight. They love to get a little bit of time. Throw out a wave here, then wait a few, throw it again, get that damage, get that wave clear. But Hand of God turns that on its head. It gets the heal, and it's essentially a counter for that item. But now, Hannah, things are happening. I can't just start talking about analysis when play-by-play -play is happening. Look at these racks just drop down. The Song of Siren won't be enough. Well, Lance stops right-clicking it. He tries to retreat, gets ensnared up, now hitting on Hannah. But the song will expire. Chibi stunned up in a bad spot with a huge meteor deafening. And now, Sankin can retreat. Mosin going to look for the epicenter, but he's still in the Radiance Aura. Buyback from Hana wants to get back in this, but the melee racks have already fallen. It's going to be on Miracle to try to push them out, but they've taken what they came for. Now stun coming out onto the Chen. He will fall, but a great double stun on from Mosin. Looking for the epicenter. He does get it off underneath the wall. Two will fall. It's freedom first, followed by Hana. And with just a couple more right clicks, he has a blink, but there's the burrow. And they are going to be able to clean house. Can they turn this into another Rax? Buybacks on the Radiant. They've got three. But uh, two of those heroes are currently alive, so they actually only have one. Alchemist respawning, but Hannah's out of the picture. And Song of Siren on, coming off cooldown, and they have to hold it here. If they lose third and fourth racks, that's probably going to cost them the game. Now we see DDZ getting caught out. He gets surged with his Ghost Walk up, and I think he's going to live. In the meantime, Lance teeping away. Is there going to be a stun? The Song of the Siren locks him in. Shapeshift expiring. He won't have far to run, and Chibi has the unstable concoction with his name on it. Throws it out, Lance will be picked off. Does not have buyback for 200 gold, and they hold their bottom racks. Desperately needed to, though the range will not regenerate. Wow, this is such an intense game one. I can't even wait to see what the rest of the series holds, but this is just such an interesting game. Like, I, I see Nagasari and I'm like, oh, we're gonna see that 50, 60 minute game. Sure, that's what Scythe wanted, but Arrow aren't letting him have it. From both sides, we are seeing a very active match and I can't even imagine what comes next but one thing is that Song Naga Siren is getting so freaking farmed Miracle is sitting on 20.7k despite his team being behind 12k he is about to pick up his heart of Tarask uh, buying out for it he will make his illusions too tanky for basic AoE to clear we're gonna have to see like a full Darkseer uh, an invoker combo or see an epicenter committed to actually killing off these illusions because they are really big and on top of that of course his rat becomes stronger because it's just more difficult you have to send more resources just to actually kill these uh, little things off these images and all this farming is happening with no risk to a miracle he hasn't had to commit to anything that he didn't want to now the pipe comes out for the Darkseer though, and like I said, it wasn't a great pickup to go in before the mech, before the blink, but now it's a great time for it. Because the Radiance damage, because of the Queen of Pain damage, they definitely want that. So, pipe comes out for Arrow, none to speak of for uh, Scythe, as like I said, Hannah's looking for BKB. No other big item pickups. The Basher for Lance is going to help out to some extent, but it's not in your traditional sense. You're not like, oh, this Luna has a BKB and I just need to disable on her. I'm going to Abyssal her. I'm going to get a, a lucky bo uh, Bash proc. No, it's going to be more like you will Bash somebody in a fight. You'll get an extra right click on them before they can run away further. But it, it it's not going to kill an Aga Siren. She doesn't die just by getting bashed. Well, I say that now, watch it happen. But anyways, Hannah blinking in onto DDZ. They throw out the concoction, but Mose is coming in with a great burrow strike. He's dropping low, though. Will he get out? Big hand of God coming in from Johnny. They mech him up as well. The impetus strike, not going to be enough. It's going to be Freedom's death to uh, first, is he? He's running fast. He doesn't have four staff, though, and he will be chased down in the end. Chibi. The next one, I guess, for target. No, uh, Mosin comes back in. Hannah blinks. Can he get a good double edge? Yes, Mosin will drop down, but Hannah is also very low HP. This fight is all over the place. They're chasing onto Miracle, but of course they can't finish him off. Xiang on the other hand, TPing away the double edge. 
is enough, but test of faith. Kuro's out the alchemist as well. Polisan chasing on a Johnny. He won't. Oh, he cheeses! He pops his own cheese and is now looking for some damage onto the Queen of Pain. What in the hell? Now, M Miracle coming back in. Manta style coming off cooldown. Just a moment here. Polisan with the big nukes. But has his ulti. Will he throw it? No, he runs out of mana. They pop the song. Only a 60 second cooldown. They'll be happy to TP away with that and defend their base as it is being pressured from the top end. What a scattered team fight. I don't even know what to say about that one. Obviously back and forth. Lance is able to keep his Aegis intact. But jeez Louise, was their damage just flying back and forth all over the place. Uh, a big thing was Mosin kind of blinking down from up here down to here and committing a, a epicenter burrow onto very little. Like he was clearing out necro creeps, maybe illusions, but he didn't obviously get a kill out of it. And in fact, he face tanked so much damage. Like if they didn't have a Chen and the mech, as well as this pipe now, Sand King would be dying like in two seconds into the fight because of how hard Polisan hits. But... Fortunately for him, they don't have any amplification. No Veil, no Orchid. He gets hit, but he gets healed right back up. And of course, that Aghanims is now up on Johnny, so they can keep that sustain going. The Veil of Discord up on Mosin, so the Meteor, the Epicenter, is hit very, very hard to those that don't have BKBs. Namely, the Hunger Siren, Enchantress, Centaur... And Alchemist. Alchemist has not been having a good game. There's been so many self-stuns coming out from him, and obviously there was a change that reduced the timer that you get to channel a concoction, but that was a long time ago, and you'd hope that they'd be able to adjust. The, especially the one where he like he did try to go for a concoction TP in his fountain to the front lines, and instead leaves his team to 4v5 because he stuns himself on his way out. It's just, uh, it, it's awkward, and it definitely doesn't seem okay. like what they had intended when they drafted this hero. Casual Hand of God. It's gonna cost a little bit of mana, but not anything as far as this cooldown goes. And they're gonna actually get some good auras out of these Alpha Wolves. One thing I haven't yet mentioned because this game has been so fast-paced is there is a little bit of thievery going back and forth between the two sides. Enchantress has the ability to enchant one of the Necro Warriors to steal that up. It means the last will won't hit on their team. Their AoE damage dealers will have a little bit more to work with there and of course you get a little bit of nice right click and mana burn out of that sucker too but on the other hand you got to look at darkseer he's got that wall of replica and every time he gets naga in that he is stealing the radiance aura and that is a big one to have for as long as it does hold up action has calmed down a little bit they're actually letting polisan just push this tower away and i'm, I'm kind of surprised at that i guess they just they're at a point where they're saying never give up never surrender let's just go full throttle on the bottom lane and I don't. I gotta say, I do not blame them in that. They are pop the necros. They really want this bottom racks. Uh, of course, the range is only 500 HP up, and it doesn't have that much armor to work with here. But Polisan's still up here, finally TPing back as the the creeps breach into the high ground on the top of tier three. Buyback status. Four for the Radiant, very important, as Hannah's going to be dropping down very quickly. A big vacuum, there's the Abyssal Blade, it's still Hannah's going to fall. The BKB from DDZ keeps him fighting, and the Song of the Siren isn't enough, but DDZ's dropping relatively low. Polisan pops his ulti and the BKB, but there's the Hand of God to keep Arrow up. They've got this wall up, they are hammering on these racks, and they are certainly going to get all these racks. Now in Civil Concoction from Chibi, no, he's getting cold snap too much, he still gets it on DDZ, but immediately dies, and they've ta lost... Their third and fourth Rax hammering down on Mikasa. They do not have the Abyssal Blade off cooldown, but they will still march up to the top. Backdoor protection is down, looking for this top tier three. Diffusal Blade picked up on the Naga Siren, but will her mirror images be enough? We'll see a retreat. We'll see Hannah blinking in, missing out on the stun. A test of faith home from Lance, but can DDZ make it home? No, he's defuseled up. He is hit down, and he will be the one to return to the fountain in a body bag. Sitting now with buyback available, I gotta say, Arrow are pretty happy about how that went down. Oh, Lance still has the Sages for whatever that's worth. Actually, not much, as it should be expiring momentarily. Um, but all the same, they've taken two of those racks. You see the desperation in Scythe's uh, markings on the map. They're like, we just gotta push it out. We just gotta push out the mid, we've gotta push out the bottom, and we've got to find a fight somewhere, because they're under so much pressure. They haven't done any damage. Okay, the creeps did a shitload of damage to that tier 3, surprisingly. But they haven't done significant enough damage to the tier 3s to feel like they can just 
all in it at any point in time. They are the ones under huge amounts of pressure, and even the Naga Siren has a hard time carrying against what Era have brought to this point. Now, we, I will mention that Miracle is sitting 2-1-9. He's barely died at all. He's barely committed himself in full. But uh, it's just been one of those games where you're under so much pressure that if you do commit, you're instantly dead. And if you don't commit, then you're losing structural damage. We do see Ethereal Blade, Queen of Pain coming out. And look at that Sonic Wave. Ethereal Blade, Sonic Wave Scream with the Intelligence Treads for a little bit of extra oomph. And that is going to be a nice pick off on the Sand King. 50 seconds, space created, and that is going to be a little bit of a relented pressure, where Lance no longer has an Aegis, having just been reclaimed by Roche. Now we see actually three stalking up. This could be bad for Arrow. They don't know about all these heroes. Looking at Dire Vision, Chibi is in hiding, and you can uh, concoction at any time. Now Lance goes in. He pops the Abyssal, but here's a counter stun by Hannah onto two. Great stun coming up as Chiang Zai mechs up, pipes up, Hand of God, and they are still fighting. Johnny going to take some hits from the Enchantress here. He should be the first to fall after the Sand King, of course, and now a low mana set of Scythe because of these Necro minions will not be able to really seal the deal, but they did get a lot out of that. Bringing down the Chen. Mosin's back up and kicking, though. Yeah, they can't turn this into a push. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Uh, Hannah just lost too much. He lost all his HP, all his mana, and the out-of-mana Queen of Pain doesn't offer much either, and she's going to probably expend it on this last scream. So, yeah, the Necro Warriors making it so that even if they lose in Heroes, they're still not losing in control of the game, because you can't push without that mana. And it makes me think, think that Invoker might even be considering EMP pretty soon. He's got four in Quas, he's got seven in Exhort, and now he's been going up for this Wex. Normally you say, hey, that's just for Meteor damage, but EMP does not look too bad against a team with only zero Arcane Boots. Wow, zero freaking Arcane Boots. Yeah, DDZ might have to multi-orbit a bit. But while we're talking about DDZ, uh, I cannot just cannot get in enough words in this match. There's just so much interesting stuff going on as well as a quick Roche respawn at 1 and minutes and 20 seconds. But if we look over DDZ, what in the world is this item build? He's got Diffusal Blade, Dominator, Mjolnir, BKB. The BKB is really good against Song, I, and a Queen of Pain as well. So I really do commend him for picking that one up. And the Necro 3, we knew it was because they wanted early tempo to get this Rax advantage that we now see. But following it up with a Mjolnir that he's put on the Lycanthrope time and time again, the Dominator... For lifesteal and sustain, especially since he's right-clicking so hard right now. I mean, what is that? 100 and... That's 200. I don't even know where I got 100, but yeah, that's 260 damage per auto-attack. So a lot of lifesteal coming through whenever he doesn't proc the Mjolnir. But now, which orb is he using? Is he? I think he's using Dominator still, so he's not going to be mana burning with Diffusal Blade. He's using it solely for Dispel. So... You can purge illusions, of course, nuke them down a little bit, but that's just one of, like, six. But what other things are there to dispel? The slows? I'll have to personally ask about this Diffusal Blade, but anyways, let's look into this right now. I'm probably just missing one little small thing I'll feel stupid about later. But for right now, a little bit of a skirmish breaks out, but Chibi is the one that's most susceptible to being picked off. He gets Diffusaled up, there is going to be the Song of Sorrow, no BKBs popped, so... A fully defensive song should not be enough! Miracle walks away! His BOTs are on cooldown, so he has to leave Private Ryan behind. Alchemist was the one, he's like, Oh, thank you so much for singing, I can TP away now! But Miracle has to uh, not even break gate as he's just cruising away, waiting for those BOTs to come down. Pulse on, Ethereal Blade, Sonic Wave, Sayonara Chen, but Abyssal Blade coming out of Pulse on, and look at that mana burn, he can't even blink! He is getting right-clicked down by this massive zoo, and the Sunstrike is off the mark. 130 HP remaining on the Quap. No way to shut her down. That's, that's an unfortunate circumstance. They lose the Chen, and I almost thought they'd get the Queen of Pain in return. Uh, deja vu from the laning phase, but not so fortunate. Queen of Pain out of mana just limps back to base and TPs home. But that Alchemist, gotta, gotta have quite a bit of a sad face where he fell. He's like, I got this, I can just TP away, and then Sangha Saren just keeps moving along, and they break him down with the Burrow Strike. Okay. 
We saw the Diffuse Blade and work as an offensive thing, just to slow down their opponents. I usually would prefer Atos there, because of the cooldown, the lack of charge based mechanic, and of course that gives you intelligence and health, which DDZ would prefer. But there's gotta be something. You can't purge Heaven's Halberd, you can purge Ethereal, but I'm not sure if it would really be worth it with the timing. Illusion. I guess it's for the slow slash... I'm not even going to keep talking about it, because I'll probably sound really stupid. There's no sheeps, there's no hexes to purge. So I really don't see much value in it, but the more I talk about it, the probably the dumber I look, if there is something very obvious I'm missing. So the cheese is up on Roche, it has dropped down to about half HP, but they can't take it with Naga right outside. Now, popping out the Stampede, jumping in, they're going to try to bring down Lance. Will it be enough damage this time around? Yes, but here's a huge vacuum. Wall of Ruffin coming through, Moza looking for the Epi, but he's hit by the Shadow Strike. He will not be able to blink anytime soon. And Scythe just get to walk away, but a buyback from Lance, moving rapidly, chasing down on two. Chibi, dropping low. Now, oh my gosh, the lag. They get the Abyssal off onto Chibi. It's lag on my part. Please tell me the... Oh, okay. It looks like it is lag in-game as well as for my connection. Restarting the stream right now. Well, there we go. Uh, there was some lag on the in-game server, and they had a quick pause for that. And then there was lag once more in on my personal connection. Fuck Time Warner Cable. But now, moving forward, the stream is back up. Hopefully you guys didn't miss too much of the action. Essentially, what did happen was there was a buyback on the Lycanthrope, but it was worth it as they were able to clean up the Alchemist and force the retreat of pretty much all of Scythe. So Arrow take the uh, Roche fight, they get the Aegis, they get the Cheese, and they will move in to try to seal the deal. They've got two racks down on, uh, two racks remaining on Scythe of course, that's been the status quo for some time, but what really matters right now is who has buyback, who has ma the big disables like Sheepstick, which I don't think anybody does at the moment, yeah, no major sheep stakes, just the Abyssal Blade for hard lockdown. But, um, so who has the buybacks, who can defend, who can TP? A lot of BOTs on the field now with Naga picking up one, uh, as well as the Sand King and Invoker. And, um, now we see the flank to gank. The smoke comes through. Han has the double damage, but he won't be doing much auto attacking because he's going to be too busy stomping all over Errol if he gets the right stun off. Coming in, they pop the stampede, but he misses on his stun. Double edge isn't enough. He forces down the hill, and now there's the vacuum and the wall. They get the illusion of Miracle, getting the radiance damage as well as epicenter. They pop off the veil, but can they finish off Miracle? He turns it around. Big right clicks onto Mosin, but is. Dis uh, disarmed by the deafening there is going to be a sonic wave in the same time as the song of the siren song tp away i think everybody gets out no casualties to speak of uh the sonic wave was a complete whiff but it's set back up in 25 seconds thank goodness for aganim scepter all right so chen great great freaking four staff jumping down the cliff surviving against all odds but the wall is on cooldown now the epicenter is on cooldown now and they didn't really get much out of those two, so is it going to be enough to break the base, to take the tier 3? I don't know. I honestly think that Scythe might hold it, but we'll have to see. Hano with a great stun to start things off. There's going to be the Burrow Strike coming in through from Moz and Chibi, looking for the stun onto 2. Sonic Wave onto 2 as well. Johnny dropping low. Lance going to get right click down. The Age is popping. Xiangzai impetus down. And they're going to be trying to clean up Lance with this ensnare connecting. He pops the PKB, but it's still locked in place. They should get one of them or not. There we go. Mosin going to be tracked down, but Lance songed to try to hold him in position. They stampeded. That's on CD, but they do have this hoof stomp, and the PKB is gone. They will stun out Lance once. They will right click him down, and Lance has no buyback. No buyback at all. Going to hold off on the base, try to push out this creep wave, but Arrow are wiped. And the base defense is held. They tried to force it without the Darkseer wall, without the uh, epicenter. They tried to force it without all these key ultimates, and Scythe just send them packing. An amazing high ground defense, but honestly, a, a show of impatience from Arrow. At the last hour, Scythe hold it, and now they move in to retake the, the control of the map. Uh, moving in towards the mid, they have, of course, BOTs to reinforce. Right now, Miracle just going to throw out some illusions. That's going to be enough to keep this wave pushing to the east, and Miracle is in the front lines here. Mirror image pops, and they are going to be going for the tier 3 here. 
Or is it? No, they're going for the top one. It did take a lot of damage a lot earlier. And there is no backdoor protection available. Oh, all three. Are you serious? I don't even know if this is greedy or genius. Now Chibi's going to get right hit down. The Ethereal Blade keeps him up for a moment longer, but he still only gets off his stun before falling. Now the real miracle down here on the tier 3. Actually, Chen being picked off by the Naga Siren at the very last second. I guess just a Riptide and the Illusion doing enough damage by itself. These things hit freaking hard when you're running 180 plus agility. Miracle, the real one, right here on the bottom lane, commits his Manta style, and he tries to walk away. Will he succeed? Has the Song of the Siren available. Cancels it once. Now the Stampede up on top. Damage coming in. We see the mechanism come out, and here's the nature's attendance. They'll keep Hannah up. He's in no trouble at all, and Miracle keeps going. Down on the bottom, the melee racks has fallen. Now we see Invoker getting picked off by the Sonic Wave. Polis on with that Ethereal Blade doing so much work. And this rat, this crazy strategy of pushing in all lanes, they have taken some real damage. They got the racks. They have taken down one tier three and left the other almost toppled at 56. But DDZ bought back. He popped the BOTs. Where is the detection? Where is the lockdown? They have the gem and they will bring down DDZ a second time. A game of throws is what we're looking at here as DDZ impatiently says, you will kill me, but I'll jump right back into the thick of things with this wave that eventually made its way back to the base. So he got some damage on the tier fours, but at what cost? Dropping low. Luckily, stream not failing this time around. Miracle is fully six slotted. Hell, I could see a seventh slotted Nagasar, and yeah, we are. He uses the he puts the Necronomicon on his hero. He uses the Necronomicon, and then he puts it back in his stash. What a player. Miracle is running 7th slot, Naga Siren, Beauty, Heart, Diffusal 2, Radiance, Butterfly, and Manta Style, plus Necro 3. The only way you can get a higher next level than this is to add in an Assault Cross for when you use Mirror Image and Manta. That's the only way you can get even higher slot of uh, Naga Siren. That'd be the 8th slot, but 7 slots, perfectly fine. Doing a lot of work as they're able to BOT to the front line and start take take out this in one quick right click ddz is still down for the count uh but uh, no buybacks but and for anybody but the dark seer so uncontested movement for miracle here in the mid lane mailerax is certainly gonna fall and uh they're still pushing on top now we see shang's out of the great vacuum mozen with the bow strike epicenter will come through under the wall the mechanism is helping but is it enough to hold them Miracle's down on bottom lane while they're fighting it out up top. Life and death. Johnny's going to fall to the Shadow Strike. They're moving in to kill off Mosin. No, he will retreat. But the Rax are the ones that are stuck in place. And they are dropping. No, this has got to be it. This is going to be the game. If DDZ can't do something crazy with his VOTs to end it out, that's it. They concede. GGWP, Scythe taken in 54 minutes. Miracle Dota with your Naga Siren. Seven slots. Pulling it out in the end. Victory. Oh, what a disadvantage were they facing? They were down 8,000 gold. Oh, more than that in experience, but they bring it back, not only evened out, but in their favor as they finish the job. Net worth count of 38k on this Naga. Finishes it out. That's what his game plan was all along. You could see it just happening piece by piece, and it all really started to fall apart for Arrow with that attempt on the high ground up on the top lane. From a bird's eye view, I could tell that that was not going to work, and I certainly didn't when Hannah got that level of a stun and the follow through that they had after that. And then DDZ with the BOTs behind enemy lines, sacrifices himself just after buying back his most vulnerable point. And that is what cost them the game. Scythe take it. Game one of this best of three, best of three series concluding with Scythe taking game one over Arrow in a 54 minute victory. Very freaking well played. An awesome game to cast and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do sincerely apologize for the stream issues. It is my ISP and uh, that's just something that unfortunately I have to deal with in my current region in America. So that does suck but the game was well worth it. And I think you guys got enough of the action to be satisfied, because that was a hell of a game. Uh, of course, you can always, if you want to make sure that you're getting 100% of the action, you can always look at the in-game ticket. That's the WD Western Digital Dota 2 Pro Series uh, happening uh, over the next several weeks, even into the next month before the 
uh, TI4 qualifiers. This is where all the big SCA Dota Giants come to play for these amazing little series here. So, again, this is the semifinals. Going to decide who goes up against Titan in the finals of series number two at the conclusion of this match. Game two coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you so much for tu uh, staying tuned. Uh, once again, I am Blaze of Dota Talk. If you want to show support for me, you can always check out my uh, social media, twitter.com slash blazecasting. Follow me there. Send me some constructive criticism, criticism there. Whatever you want, but please be somewhat nice at the very least. Uh, you can also follow the stream, twitch.tv slash dotatalktv2. And I uh, greatly appreciate that as well. And also, shout out to the sponsors. Western Digital uh, have sponsored the prize pool for this tournament. They're highlighting the Western Digital Black Series, which is designed for performance and gaming. And if you are in shopping for hardware, check out their line of products. That's it. Going into game two in just a minute here, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in.